Hello everybody. Welcome back. Um, I'm coming to you today with a video about obedience. Not obedience to me, not obedience to anybody else. Obedience to God. Um, we need to know about obedience. And this is why I chose this particular little sign. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord from Joshua 24, 15. And the reason I picked this is because by serving, we are being obedient. God wants us to serve him. So by serving him, we are being obedient to him. And that is why I picked this. So I'm going to open in prayer and then we're going to go on with this. come to you right now I ask Lord that you would open the eyes of people to be able to see what I'm saying you would open their ears to be able to hear what I'm saying and you would open their hearts to receive what I'm saying I pray against anything that would come in the way of this being delivered to them that this message would be delivered to them no interruptions no interferences just pray that your hand would be on this message and on me as I deliver this message and that the only words that I speak would be words that you want me to speak I thank you and I ask this in Jesus name okay so this is about obedience obedience is a word that no one likes very much <laughs> but why because we as humans do not like to have to obey someone right I mean we'd rather do things our way with no one to answer to we all <laughs> do obey though we just don't think about it because it's a part of our everyday life. If you work, you obey your boss. Your boss tells you to be at work at a certain time and you're there. Your boss tells you you can take a break and you take your break. Your boss tells you you can't take a break and you say okay. <laughs> if you drive, <laughs> you're obeying traffic rules and regulations. Not everybody does, but most people do. Um, we have to have a driver's license to drive a car. We have to have insurance to drive a car. When you were a child, you obeyed your parents and teachers at school. So why is it that one little word makes us cringe just at the mention of it? Nobody, nobody wants to put the word obey in their marriage vows anymore. We just don't like to have to listen to what other people are telling us to do. We like to be our own person and do as we please. But God says different. We are supposed to obey. So let's see what God's word says about it, about this word. And in case you guys don't know what it means to obey, obey is to do as we are told to or to listen to and follow rules. So I'm going to read you some Bible verses um, about this. You're welcome to follow along with me if you would like to get a Bible. If you do have one, you can turn to Exodus chapter 19 verse 5. 
It says, Now, if you obey me fully and keep my covenant, then out of all nations you will be my treasured possession, although the whole earth is mine. So, God wants us to obey him fully. Okay, let's go to the next one. Deuteronomy. That's the New Testament. Deuteronomy, chapter 11, verse 1. Love the Lord your God and keep his requirements, his decrees, his laws, and his commands always. So, again, this right here, serving the Lord. He wants you to, what, love him, which shouldn't come hard. Loving him is something we were made, we were meant to love him. That is what we are meant to do. We are meant to serve God and love God. Keeping his requirements and his decrees and his laws and his commands. Now, I know that. I know that some people don't think about these things, but it's something we really do need to think about and we need to start doing. John 15 verse 9, as the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. And let's go to 2 Corinthians, chapter 10, verse 5. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. Now, what does that mean? If we're taking captive every thought, that means what? We shouldn't be saying anything or thinking anything or doing anything that is not obedient to God. So as you see, God's word has a lot to say about being obedient. And I still have more. Um, Revelation chapter 14 verse 12 this calls for patient endurance on the part of the people of God who keep his commands and remain faithful to Jesus. John chapter 14 verse 15 If you love me, keep my commands. So when you're obedient to God and you're doing what he expects you to do and what he asks you to do, by doing these things, you're showing him that you love him. Luke eleven twenty eight. He replied, Blessed are those who hear the word of God and obey it. So if you, and I'm hoping you do, if you read your word and you know what God's commands are and the laws and the things that God expects us to do, we are supposed to obey it. It's right there, right in, right in black and white. And if you do these things, you are blessed. 1 Peter 1.14 As obedient children, do not conform to the evil desires you had when you lived in ignorance. So, what, what does this mean? As a child of God, as an obedient child of God, you're not supposed to conform to the ways that you were before you were a child of God before the before you came to know God and before you before when you were not 
a child of God, before when you were just living your life the way you wanted to live it and doing the things that you wanted to do and living your human life and not the way God wanted you to live. We're not supposed to be doing this anymore because we're changed now. Now we're a child of God and now we should be living for God and we should be living different lives, not the same as we were living before. As believers, we have to obey God's laws and do as he said to do. This includes things like loving others, following the commandments, not putting things above God, because he comes first in our lives always. Are you putting anything above God? Your first thing that you should be doing when you wake up in the morning is thanking God for this for that morning and thanking God for waking you up. Thank him for a good night's sleep. Thank him for the day that he's going to give you. God should be first. Your phone should not be first. If you wake up in the morning and the first thing you put your hands on is your phone, I, I, I am I was guilty of this and I've stopped doing it before I do anything I I pray and I read some of my Bible and then I will go to whatever it is that I had to do but if you wake up in the morning and you're reaching for your phone or going for anything but God then you're putting things ahead of him God should be first always obeying God comes easy because we just we just do it out of fear of him and out of our love for him and yes we we know we know that God is capable of giving and, and capable of taking away and for this reason yes it, we do fear him but he loves us and he wants us to love him back so if we want to show him we love him we need to do what he wants we need to do as he says if, if you're a little child and your parents tell you to do something you're going to do it and if you don't what happens if you don't, then your your parents aren't happy with you. You get scolded. But we do things out of love to show our parents that we love them. It should be the same with God. If we're not living for God and obeying Him, I mean, loving Him doesn't come easy, but... Once we start a personal relationship with him, we just do it, no questions asked. Because when you love him, your biggest desire is to serve him and to please him. And, and, and you want him to smile down upon you. We find joy in doing what God wants us to do. We desire to please our Heavenly Father and he desires for us to do so. When we don't obey God, it is displeasing to him. We need to try to always obey him. And if we don't, if you do something that is displeasing to God, then we should repent of this and ask for his forgiveness. Pray to God and ask him to keep you or to help you with being obedient. I'll lead you in a prayer in a couple of minutes. Um, and if you need help in this area, then, then I would like it if you would please repeat this prayer.
Okay. So, I'm going to lead you in a prayer, and I would like it if you would please repeat after me. <sighs> Heavenly Father, I am coming to you because I need your help. I love you, Father, and want to make you happy with what I do and say, but I sometimes struggle with obedience. You know my heart, Father. And you know I love you. I ask that you would help me to be more obedient to your word and to how my actions towards you are supposed to be. I long to live a life that shows love, respect, honor, and obedience to you, Father. I thank you for hearing my prayer, and I ask this in Jesus' precious name, amen. I hope, I hope that not just some of you, but I hope that every one of you prayed that prayer because I think everyone needs a little help with being obedient. We are human. And like I said, it's in our nature to not want to be obedient. It's in our nature to fight being obedient because we want to be our own person. But I promise you, I promise you that if you are obedient to God and you do as he wants you to do and you please him, that he will bless you. You will see his love in your life. You will see his blessings on your life. You will feel joy you will feel so much joy and so much happiness knowing that your Heavenly Father is very pleased with you and what you're doing. I have felt more joy in my life recently since I've been obedient to Him than I have felt in a long, long time. And I want to feel more of that. And that's what happens. You want to feel more. You long for more. So you obey more. You're obedient more. You do things to please Him even more. When I pray, when I talk to him, there are times when I feel joy to the point of laughter and, and just looking up and thanking him and praising him and laughing and smiling because there's so much joy in my heart. And that feeling is a feeling like you've never felt. want that feeling, if you want to be able to experience the joy of God like I do, then be obedient. Listen to what he says. Do what he wants. And show him. Show him how much you love him. And his love, his, his love will shine down on you and you will be filled with his joy. I can promise you. If you do not know God, if I mean, if you do not know Him and you are not a believer, you 
you need to, you need to, trust me, you need to, not just because I'm telling you to, but because if you're not a believer, you're not going to experience these feelings of joy, but you can, you can have these feelings of joy. All you need to do is ask him into your life and start living for him. That's all you have to do. And it's very simple and very easy to do. I know him. I'm in a per I have a personal relationship with him. And the closer that you get the more love and the more joy that you feel. So I want to take just a minute, please. I normally don't do this on the ends of my videos, but I feel like I'm being led to do so. I would like it if you would please say a prayer after me. If you would like to know God the way I know God, and you would like the joy and the peace and the comfort in your life and let the Heavenly Father give you the love that He has to give you. So I would like you to say this prayer and I want you to mean it with all of your heart. If you know and you believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died cross and shed his blood so that you could be forgiven and you believe that you will be saved you will be able to experience what I'm experiencing so please please repeat after me Heavenly Father, I believe, I believe, and I want this, Lord. Father, I am a sinner. I know I have sinned against you. But I want to turn my life around, and I want to follow you. I believe in my heart that Jesus came and he lived on this earth and he died on that cross and shed his precious blood so that I could be forgiven of all of my sins. And I ask right now that you would come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Today, people will wake up, and before the day is over, their life will be changed forever. Car crashes Sorry. can't be predicted. That is not a good time for a thing to come around. I ask that you come into my heart, and that you would be my Lord and Savior. And I know now that I am a child of God. I am saved by his stripes, by Jesus' precious blood, I am saved. And I will live for you in obedience and in love. In your precious name, Jesus, I pray. Amen. I apologize for the commercial. That was not supposed to happen. <laughs> that has never happened on another video of mine. But, you know what? We are not going to let that interfere with 
what we were just doing. The important part is that you said the prayer and if you did say that prayer, let me know. Please leave a comment and let me know. Sometimes when you're doing important things like that, interruptions happen. And sometimes it's because the enemy doesn't want what we just did to happen. But you know what? I did it anyways. <laughs> and that's the important part. So I just pray that God's peace would be with you all. That God's love would be on you all. And that you would be filled with joy. I appreciate you guys watching. I really do. And thank you so much for listening to this whole video. And like I said, I normally don't do a, as they say, altar call. But I was feeling led to do so, and that's why I did it. So God bless you all. And we will be doing another video very soon. I'm trying to get one out at least at least once a week. So be watching for it. And until then, I love you all with the love of God. And I will talk to you all very soon.